Hello, Sky friends, and welcome to Seasons of Skyrend, Book 4. We're a custom 5e D&D adventure that focuses on the stories of our characters as they seek to change the world, and how the world responds in turn. I am your host and DM, Scott, and you can find me on Twitter at TheScottBlake. Hi, I'm Chris, and you can find me at EwokKiller on Twitter. I play Finnegan Finn Tempest, a tiefling trainer, which is a Skyrim original class supported by the Metalweave Games supplement Baby Beastry. Finn is the trainer of Cerulius, a blue guard drake. Hi, my name is Nate. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Nate. I play Darvin Grimm, the human monk, and I am currently hosting Cade, the demigod of the land in my brain. Hi, I'm Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Shannon. I play Aranus Gray, the god of rebellion, and I am a half-elf bard. You can also find the show on Twitter at Skyren Podcast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Head on over to find out about bonus chapters, early access, NPC creation, and more. Now then, thank you for joining us, and please enjoy this chapter in Seasons of Skyren. Honey Hollow is hardly the city as you last saw it. The death and destruction brought by the conscription was devastating. While Aranus had a heart-to-heart with Liana, Finnegan and Darwin spent time in the ruins of the city. Finnegan managed to find a few bottles of Honey Hollow mead while training with Cyril. Darwin, on the other hand, was more focused on exploring stumbling upon a couple flasks of weak gin in Bacata's destroyed distillery. In the gardens, he used his newfound gardening tools to salvage and pot a cranesbill flower, a symbol of enduring life amid the senseless destruction. The rest of the party took advantage of the shelter and relative warmth to rest and recover from the journey so far. Considering all that lies ahead, it is a sensible decision. When the time came to destroy the teleportation box, Aranus asked Liana to carry a message back to Cynthia and Capris. The half-orc tavern owner is expecting to reunite with Aranus, but the promise will have to do for now. Once Liana left through the teleportation box, what followed could only be described as disastrous. The combined efforts of Aranus and Finnegan produced a dark and sparkling void that tried to pull everyone in. Finnegan in an attempt to protect everyone, conjured a protective sphere, saving everyone but himself. After being pulled within the void, Finnegan found himself floating in a dark space dotted with sparkling lights and color shifts resembling galactic arms. Worse still, he was not alone. A vast pair of eyes, seemingly set within the dark and sparkling void itself, opened to focus on the lone tiefling. A being of untold power, they introduced themselves as the Looming Tomb. The surrounding void, which they called the Hollow, is their domain. Not content to let Finnegan's intrusion go unpunished, they summoned a small group of halfling vestiges to assault him. Once they drained enough of Finnegan's essence, the Looming Tomb produced a vestige of Finnegan himself, looking every bit like the tiefling except entirely dark and sparkling as well. Even though Finnegan was alone, he was not entirely on his own. Still being able to communicate with Cyril, the Drake managed to signal to Arnas and Darwin to begin a rescue. With a length of rope and the assistance of their new bear Tamani ally, Asturias Chase, the party was able to provide Finnegan with a path back out. The looming tomb, content to allow Finnegan's escape, conveyed a disturbing message of their own. This is not the first time they have been contacted. The looming tomb, along with the hollow, is on their way. Once free, Finnegan quickly negated the pull of the teleportation box, but the doorway remained open. With everybody relatively safe for the moment, what do you want to do? No, the next thing Finnegan's going to do is try and throw another dispel magic on it. Like, on, I don't know if... If we're at a point where I can do that again, but that's the next thing he's going to do as soon as he can. I'm 
do you have the spell slots for it? Yes, I definitely do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does anybody else have something that they want to try before Finnegan does this? I got nothing. I was just going to try to firebolt it. <laughs> that seemed like a good idea or a bad idea? Do you have dispel magic? Uh, no, I don't. What did you try the first time, Arnis? Was it just an arcana thing? Like an arcana check to try to dispel it? Oh, no, I do have dispel magic. Okay, I thought so. I didn't think that was all Finnegan's work. I like, do, yeah. Arnis failed at something. I, yeah, yeah, I, I do have dispel magic. Okay, follow-up question before you continue with the destruction and otherwise deactivation of this box. Does anybody want to investigate it or communicate with the looming tomb inside? No. I mean, there's part of me that does kind of want to know, like, what it is and what's going on. <laughs> Just because this isn't our first encounter with something that looks like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. I only ask because if you, do, if you are successful in the destruction and deactivation here, then you lose access to the first-hand source of information. And then everything else will have to be second-hand or conjecture or conspiracy theory. Who knows? Okay, so yeah, I want to... I don't, I don't even know what to do, though. Like, I don't want to talk to it because I don't know that it talks, right? I don't know that. Only Finnegan knows that. Only Finnegan knows that so far. Yeah. But I, we're at a point here where we don't need to be thinking as quickly as initiative order. So if you need a moment to sit down and stand around and talk and be like, what the fuck happened? You can okay. take that time. Okay. Finnegan, if you want to explain what was going on in there. Finnegan's... Kind of one track in right now. He's still okay. dealing and processing. And so until this thing is done, he's not going to really be able to to do much beyond continue to try and shut it down. Like, okay. Um, Understood. Uh, in which case, no, Arnis, you don't know that there's a being in there that you could communicate with. Yeah, I'm just, I was just going to say, if someone were to like yell out, why are you reacting so intensely? Like, I would give an answer. <laughs> But literally, you see me come rolling out of that door, draw my wand, and cast one spell, and then prepare to cast the same spell again. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's here's what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna do. Like, I see him getting ready to like ramp up again, and I want to stop him and just go, just go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take a breath. How were you trying to stop me? I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I can't... If you're not reaching out and stopping my hands from casting the spell, I am going to continue casting the spell. Okay, then I grab your arm. Okay. All right, a little bit more forceful I look, than I was expecting, but cool. I look at you, and I attempt to rip my arm free as I say, there is... Um, I'm sorry. As I say, I, there is a creature in there more evil and dangerous than anything we've ever faced on this plane of existence, and it must be stopped from getting through. I... Okay, this is new information. Um, can I take one second to see if I can figure out, like, what this is or where it's from? We do not have the time to try to negotiate with this level of evil. It must no. be prevented from... I don't want to negotiate with it. I just want to learn something about it. I play yourself. I'm calming myself down because I'm trying to differentiate between me <laughs> and Finnegan, which is not easy. Mm-hmm. Do you really want to talk to one of the most evil things you've ever seen? Or do you want to prevent it from coming through and destroying all of us? Okay, you're, n- you're not actually hearing what I'm saying. I don't want to speak to it. It's a type of magic that Lin was using. I want to figure out how he did that. Fine. And I drop my wand and I walk away and I just start walking. Does Cyril follow you? Yeah, 100%. Oh, Set the scene here. All right. Finnegan marches off, Cyril right behind. I mean, literally, the only thing I want to do is I, like investigate or cast Arcana or like whatever, because I don't have detect magic or like anything like that. So okay. I just I'm, like. Yeah. If you want to get a little closer, again, it is safe to do so. There's no threat of getting pulled in. Uh, if you want to get a little closer, you can use an Arcana check to kind of better understand what type of magic is going on here. Um, An investigation check could work, but I think the results would be less thorough. My arcana's high, so we'll try that. If this doesn't work, then I'm casting Dispel Magic. Okay, okay. Even if it does work, I'm going to cast Dispel Magic. 
<laughs> I was going to say, even if this works, I'm pretty sure you're just... <laughs> okay, go for it. Roll some, roll some Arcana. Um, I got a 19. Oh, that is very nice, very nice. Tell you what, Arnus, why don't you ask me a question about this magic? Be the DM. <sighs> What's a question that Arnus had? Like, what, what is Arnus trying to figure out here? Arnus is asking to himself, like, ah, oh, shit, I got to figure out what's going on. What's the question in Arnus's head? I want to know how Lynn tapped into this. Like, how did he even contact it? Okay. That's going to be... That's going to be above what I got. I'm well, no, I, I'm not going to say it's necessarily above what you got, but it's kind of coming at it from a different angle. Because it's like, in order to know that, you have to better understand what this magic is. So... Mm. Well, then maybe maybe that's where I start. Cause, like, that's the ultimate question that I want answered. But, like, what is this? Like, where did it come from? Okay. What, what is this? What is it? Which I think does still help answer the, the Lynn question. It's, it's not like a, it's not a raw, natural, magical source. It, it may be natural in its own origins. But it's not like, you know, it's not like he walked up to a pool of lava and just like scooped some out mm. you know it's not like aha you know i found it in the wild you know this is clearly a magical source that someone something has been cultivating mm. in some way were finnegan here he would probably be like yeah it's the looming tomb that's doing that it is it is of a nature that is unfamiliar to you definitely I, you didn't recognize it the first time you saw it you didn't recognize it the next like two or three times you saw it. So it's very other compared to what you know. And I think the part where it connects with how did Lynn get in touch with it, it doesn't seem like a power source or a magic source that someone would just stumble upon. Like, oops, accidentally. Like someone would have to be reaching out and seeking an answer. It's not like Lynn was just drawing runes and one day it was like, ooh, what's this dark and sparkly nonsense? However, that still doesn't explain what it's doing in Imelda's teleportation box. Right. That part is, hmm, because you didn't make this portal and you messing with it didn't all of a sudden reach out and contact this space. This is, this is something that was, uh, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? This was like a potential that was always there in the box. It was just never noticed. Because when you used it before, you have used this yourself. You just walked through one end and you were out the other. And I think that's what I can give you now with the one roll. Okay. Um, I want to cast a spell magic. All right. But I, I think Arnis is still like feeling the effects of having like failed the last time. And mm. so what he's going to do is a couple things. First, he's going to cast it at a level five. Oh, very nice. Level three. And second, I want to divinely power it up. Oh, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> How many charges do you have left right now? I have nine. I still have all of them. For nine. Ay, ay, ay. Mm hmm. I need to update my little, little tab there. All right, you've got nine. Cool. No, that's very good. That's very good. What do you want to do? How many do you want to spend, and what do you want to do with that? Well, actually, no. <laughs> I want to make it so it just, like, goes away. Like, so I just kill it dead. I want it to short circuit, essentially. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, okay. How many charges would I have to spend so that this level five spell behaves like I'm casting it at, like, level eight. <laughs> That's a good question. I hadn't worked out the math, you know, from every level to every level. Because I think raising something from, like, level one to level two is very different from going from, like, five to six or oh, seven oh, to yeah. eight. T totally agree. Because eighth level magic is just ridiculously powerful. All right, going to do some real, like, what's the phrase? Back of the notebook math type stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's, whew, let's say it would be two points to go from five to six. Okay. And then three to go from six to seven and from seven to eight again. I 
basically just took the nine and split it into thirds. Like everything between a one and three is one, four and six is two, seven and nine is three. That's okay. obviously subject to change because I don't know how balanced that is or not. It's not often that I have nine charges in a day either. Right, right. Just <laughs> so it's not often that I'd be able to just be like, hey, can I just pump this up like six yeah. levels? And that may be contradicting what we've done with other spells in the past, but... Um, I have never tried to pump something up in levels with this. Okay. <laughs> I do recall that. I've tried to add extra stuff onto it, but I've never been like, hey, can I cast this as if it was like a level four? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what it'd be, which comes to eight, which... Yeah, that knocks out... ...is still within your range, but I don't know if you want to use that many right now, considering you don't know if that's going to work. I don't either. So here's what I want to do. I, I said I was going to cast it at level five, right? Yep. I want to just pump it up to level six. Okay. We'll do that with two. Let's just go one. Okay. Which is fine. I think, I think raising the level of the spell lowers the DC that you're going to have to try to make here. Okay. Because you are going to have to roll. Okay. Uh, so yeah, according to the rules of Dispel Magic, um, and if it's higher than your level, which it is... Okay simply because this is connected with the looming tomb themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, make an ability check using your spellcasting ability, which is charisma, of course. Not proficiency, right? Like, just the base charisma, right? That's how it reads. That's fine. So, yeah. Just roll d20 plus charisma. Well, it's not as bad as last time. That's good. But it's still only a 13. Hmm. Okay. What does this look like? What do you see... What does Darwin see? Sam, Carolina, Asturias, Ristos, Felicity, Ulwan, he's there too. Yeah. Finnegan, how gone are you? I've gone to wherever the nearest campfire is. Okay, so you've gone back to the library. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's been a second campfire yet. Uh, at least not that we've talked about. If you wanted to make another one somewhere else, that's fine. Okay. So what does everybody see? Everybody except for Finnegan and Cyril. Arnis would begin casting this dispel magic, much higher level than usual, divinely charging it. And what do you see? So the box, the open plane of the box, where you have to pass through to go to the other side. And in the past, that would just take you right out the other side of the box, wherever it happened to be. But right now is that dark and sparkling void. And it's just kind of magically humming right there. And as you cast this divine magic, it begins to fade and it begins to bleed upwards and outwards into the sky. At least that's kind of what it looks like. It's hard to tell because if you were to look at it with the sky in the backdrop, it'd be very difficult to differentiate the two. So it looks like it's just kind of evaporating, smoking upwards, but as its own self. And it's not a hundred percent successful yet. Imelda, Imelda was very skilled with magic. She was pioneering something that had never been done before, and was the first to find success. Even so, not like a ninth level artificer or anything. So overcoming her magic seems to be easy enough. But the magic that's coming through from this other side, the names of which you don't have yet, because Finnegan did not say, he left without fully explaining everything. Whatever this other magic is, or this evil creature, as Finnegan calls it, resides, very powerful. And you can tell right away that even with Finnegan's first attempt, which was successful, and your second attempt, which is also successful, this is not 100% turned off, and it's kind of evaporating up into the sky. And as that happens, you see the outline of a dark and sparkling hand reach up through the void. Okay. It is not attempting to grab you. I don't know how close you are. I'm not. I know Dispel Magic has a range of 120 feet, so you could be a yeah, safe distance away. I would, have, I would have backed way up. But you see a hand reaching up. Darvin, you definitely see this too, as do all of your allies. Um, this hand is reaching up, and it is being followed by the rest of the arm and the outline of a body. And it takes a moment, but you recognize the outline of Finnegan emerging from this box. This is Finnegan's vestige. This is Vestige Finnegan, however we want to say it. So, uh, clearly whatever, you know, is in there 
scared Finnegan enough that he was like, he was gung ho to do whatever. So I feel completely confident in saying, I would like to cast Firestorm and burn <laughs> the shit out of this thing, please. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> if the sixth level spell didn't work, let's try a seventh level spell. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Would everybody like to roll initiative, please? Oh, dear. Because this vestige is not just going to let you do this. I got to give the bad guys a chance to do something. Oh, let me roll for your allies, too. Just on mass. Oh, don't blame me. Blame the dice. All right. RNS. I got a 19. Ooh, very nice. Darvin. 15. Finnegan, you don't need to roll for initiative here, but uh, when RNS's spell goes off, you're definitely going to hear it. <laughs> uh, that'll be very noticeable. Got it. So once that happens, you could probably show up in the next round of combat, depending on how, how motivated you feel to do so. Um. Your party rolled a 4-4 four, four initiative. This vestige only rolled an 11. So, Arnus, you want to cast Firestorm, a 7th level spell. Is that correct? That is correct. I have a question for Finnegan. Mm-hmm. Finnegan, do you know Counterspell? Mm-hmm. Please say. How much do you want me to help you, Scott? Because I don't know Counterspell. Okay. I mean, if you want to send me a list of what your spells, current spells are, that would be super handy. Wow. I mean, as a, as a tiefling, I have access to Hellish Rebuke once a day. Well, thank you for that information. Um, okay. Let's deal with this Firestorm first, since Finnegan does not know Counterspell. Firestorm. Arns, what does Firestorm look like? Well, to be super technical about it... What does um, this Firestorm look like? It's mostly... Just a whole bunch of cubes of fire, just like literally like in each other, right? So like it can be up to like 10, 10 foot cubes, but Mm -hmm. I literally just concentrate them like in one spot. (laughs) Okay. You are aware that that doesn't amplify the damage if they're... No, I know. Okay. I know. Okay. It just makes it extra bright. (laughs) No, I know it doesn't amplify the damage, but there's nothing else outside of that area except, oh no that's a lie because i want to stack them up toward the stuff that's dissipating into the sky Ah, okay so this is like a giant column of fire yeah 100 percent. just 10 feet wide Mm -hmm. burning Mm -hmm. column Mm -hmm. of fire yeah all righty each creature in the area must make a dexterity saving throw all right let's have vestige finnegan roll a dexterity saving throw neapolitan die let's go Probably not a success. 16. Yeah, that is not a success. Okay. So, how much damage does Firestorm deal? 7d10 fire damage. That's that's a lot of fire. Go ahead and roll it. Wow, I don't think I could have like rolled that better at all. That's an even 50 damage. <sighs> Ow. <laughs> I rolled three nines. <laughs> <laughs> Never rolled that high ever. <laughs> so this is just an instantaneous burst of fire mm-hmm. that then dissipates away, right? There's mm-hmm. no lasting effects. Uh no. Other than the fire damages objects in the area and ignites flammable objects that aren't being worn or carried. And if you choose plant life in the area it is not affected. Like say a box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The box definitely takes damage from that magic (sighs) that was painful for this vestige but as chris was so nice to point out finnegan does know hellish rebuke and this vestige of finnegan knows a version of hellish rebuke it's something rebuke hollow rebuke perhaps vestige rebuke i don't know i don't have a good name for it yet i've forgotten about this ability but you are being rebuked from within the flames as they're going up this finger just right at you. And please make a dexterity saving throw, Arnis. Okay, I have a question. Uh-huh. I have, I have an insane level question. I'm can listening. You, can you counterspell Hellish mm-hmm. Rebuke? <sighs> yes, it is a spell. Even 
in Finnegan's case, this is a like naturally known thing as being a tiefling. It is still magic. It's just what do you call it? like inborn magic, basically. You know, he didn't have to learn it. I mean, he had to learn how to harness it, mm-hmm. but it was always there. But it is still magic. So you can try to counterspell a hellish rebuke. Okay. Then uh, that's what I want to do. Okay. And that works for up to level three, right? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a first level spell. And even if they were going to boost it, it would not have been that much. So Vestige Finnegan does their version of a hellish rebuke. I do like the hollow rebuke phrasing of it. It sounds nice. There's this hollow rebuke. Fingers are pointed at you, and there's this stream of energy, and you immediately counterspell it. So you are safe, Arnis, from that. Good job. Mm, for the moment. For the moment. Darvin, what would you like to do? Well, I guess we're attacking, huh? <laughs> I mean, there's a big old column of fire there for a moment. That box is still, like, smoldering on the sides. But this vestige of Finnegan is still alive. Am I going to catch myself on fire if I get too close? No, no, the fire's not going to harm you. Okay. How close am I? At the doorway, I would have assumed, or open section of the wall where the conscription blasted open the city. No more than 40 feet away. Okay. All right. I think I'll just charge in and attack then. Okay, I love it. Let's do it, Carvin. Seems like the right call. So, first attack, leg sword. Ooh, a crit failed. Ooh. Okay, yeah. (laughs) That's not going to hit, Darvin. You swing. Your leg sword, like, clanks off of the teleportation box because they haven't even had a moment yet to step out of that. Without doing any damage to the box or to this vestige of Finnegan. Would you like to keep going? Yes, second attack. Bring it. Okay, that's a little better. I got a 25. That is a little better. That's going to (laughs) hit. Nice. For 12 damage. Okay. That's not a ton better. Are you going to... Punch twice. Yes, please. Key point. Okay. Flurry of blows it away. Yes, that. First punch. Is it 29? That definitely hits. Where are you punching this vestige of Finnegan? Mm, well, he's still crawling out of the thing, right? Like rising out of the box. So then whatever I can reach. Face, right. probably, if that's reachable. Yeah, I'd say anything torso and up is reachable. Okay. Punch him in the face. It feels weird. doesn't feel like punching a normal face. So I got a 9. Oh, damage? Yes. Okay. And I got one more punch because of the flurry. Mm-hmm. Oof, and I rolled an 11. That one's not going to hit. I think the first punch, they lean back. So by the time the second one comes in, they're just not there anymore. Damn it. it. Does feel, your fist feels weird. You've punched a lot of faces, and this is not like that. Like, you can't feel the bone structure, the muscular structure underneath. It's just weird. Hard to put your finger on it, but possible to put your fist on it. So that's good news. Very punchable. Only sometimes. Doesn't hurt to punch it. It is this vestige of Finnegan's turn. You're right there. You did the polite thing of coming to them. But the first thing they're going to do is... Actually, I wish Finnegan were still here. Finnegan, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is why I wish you were still here. Finnegan, you've been a tamer for some time now, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the... uh, Ah, uh, what's the what's the term that you have for Cyril? Companion. Like, what makes them like the the special like bond that you have between them, mm-hmm. as opposed to other creatures that you have or could have? I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to find it. A creature companion. Okay, okay. That's the thing that lets you communicate with them telepathically. Oh, they are considered your bonded companion. So, yes. bonded companion. Yes, yes. Thank you. That was just a little bit of knowledge gathering, so I could ask this question properly. Finnegan, you've been a tamer for a while. You've worked with dragons, drakes, wyverns for some time. Can you tell us about the first wyvern that you bonded with as a bonded companion? Yeah, I can. It was the one that I rode for the Royal Air Force. It was of average size, slightly on the smaller size. 
and was well known for the speed I was able to get out of it. Like we had bonded in such a way that I was able to enhance its natural like speed. Mm-hmm. And we did not unbond, but I stopped. It stopped being my companion when it died in battle. That. And that was the reason why I left the Air Force was because it was treated as just another creature in the service of the king. And I was handed mm-hmm. another one and said, get on and keep fighting. And I couldn't do that. Mm, like the equivalent of, oh, you crashed a boat. Here's a new boat. But like, this is Pretty a living much, creature. Yeah. What color were they? I mean, I know wyverns don't have special abilities based on their color, but just out of curiosity, what color were their scales? Uh, I'm going to say like a dull copper like bordering on like brown or sorry dull brass bordering on brown what was your wyvern's name this first I'm bonded wyvern right now okay is this something that's actually in your backstory or are you making this up as we go um, parts of this are in my backstory and so i'm trying to see if i like i put a name in there or not okay oh because they were again part of the military they were simply known as silver four I called him Silver Fork. Thank you, Finnegan. Uh, Yeah, this is a really scarring incident. Thanks for minding this one, Scott. Mm -hmm. Well, if the sound of Aranus's fiery explosion draws you, this is what you're going to see. This vestige, Finnegan. Aranus just tried to crisp them up with a huge column of fire. Darwin came, started swinging leg swords, punching. This vestige without speaking, places their fingers to the sides of their head, takes them away, and begins drawing a shape in the sky. As their hands move, and they complete this shape, and they're still weaving their hands, you all, Darwin especially, can see a dark and sparkling wyvern begin to take shape as it's growing bigger and bigger till it eventually will reach its full natural size. And this is Vestige Finnegan's memory of Silver Fork. And as it grows, it lets out a loud roar, which echoes through what remains of Honey Hollow. Finnegan, you definitely hear that. You don't know who it is, but it definitely is a drake that you just heard, which is weird because you're not traveling with any at the moment. But Darvin, you're right there. You haven't gone anywhere. So... After beginning that process, what this Vestige Finnegan is going to do is the same thing that those halflings did to Finnegan. He's going to reach out and touch you. In fact, he's going to try to grab you by both of your wrists and try to drain from you. I don't know. So let's roll some dice. Uh, He's got two hands, so he's going to do this twice. Mm. Not particularly impressive. Does a 12 hit Darvin? No. How about a 17? Yeah, that does. Okay. Well, it's probably good that it's only one of them, because it's not exactly a light touch. Mm. So his left hand grabs onto your right wrist rather firmly and squeezes, and you can feel this energy being pulled out through your arm and into this vestige of Finnegan, and you're going to take 26 points of damage. Man. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Ah, one moment. Oh, there it is. Um, that's a 12. Mm. This is not a high DC, but it is higher than that. So you take this 26 points of damage, and it is also deducting that from your hit point maximum. So you cannot be healed that 26 points that you just took. Once you have a chance to like actually rest, mechanically speaking, a long rest, that effect will go away. Got you. But those 26 points of damage you just took, you can't heal that back right now. Okay. Oh, I might actually have a way to get Darwin down to zero HP. Oh, with math. Oh. <laughs> um, and that's all that Vestige Finnegan can do at this point. He begins summoning this huge wyvern out of the same seemingly dark and sparkly material that they are made out of, and grabbed onto Darwin's arm. This wyvern is still growing as it marches forward towards the doorway, towards the opening where Aranus and the rest of the party is at. Technically speaking, Darwin, 
It is leaving your area. So if you wanted to make an attack of opportunity on it as it does so, you can do that. Because right now it's just crawling along the ground. Hell yeah. Okay, go for it. Oof, but I rolled a... I rolled a 14. That's going to hit. Nice. This wyvern is not armored in any extra way. So that'll hit. Go for it. Go for it. 10 damage. Okay. Not a whole lot. They take it. And there's like a roaring hiss back at you (sighs) as it continues to march forward. And as it is still growing, it is just going to make one slashing attack with its claws at Aranus. It's probably not going to hit. Aranus, does a 14 hit? No. Okay. That's all that it can do this time because it is still growing. It is still getting to its full size. And I think by the end of its turn, it's roughly there. It is large size. It could be mounted and ridden if so. If it allowed such a thing. Don't know if it would let any of you do it, but Vestige Finnegan, perhaps, since they summoned it, and what we know about Finnegan and who he is and what he does. It is your party's turn. Asturias, still in bear form, has never seen shit like this before. This is extremely weird, but clearly dangerous. And they are a hunter. That's the guild they belong to. That is what they do for a living. So what she's going to try to do, she's going to take that rope that you all used to pull Finnegan back out, and she's going to quickly tie that into a loop, like a lasso. She's going to try to throw this up around the wyvern's neck. Obviously, can't ground it totally, but might be able to help mitigate some of its abilities down here on the ground. So yeah, that's what Asturias is going to do. Ho ho, with that 18 on the die, that rope goes up and around and pulls tight around this wyvern's neck. She gives it a good uh, yank, and it goes, ah, like the head gets pulled to the side a little bit, and she's holding on, kind of helping keeping the creature in place, helping to limit its mobility. Carolina and Sam are going to rush out and try to just slash and bite. So we're going to start with Sam. He's going to come out, do his claw bite, just going after one of the legs of this, of this wyvern. He rolled a 2 and a 19, both one away from greatness. Uh, but it's a very good claw hit that he's going to get in. Carolina is going to just double claw. A couple of quick slashes. A 2 and a 7 on the dice. So unfortunately... She could not get through its natural defenses. Unnatural defenses? Very difficult to say. Finnegan, you have now heard a fiery explosion as Arnis casted that, and you've heard a wyvern's roar. What are you and Cyril going to do? I curse the fact that I dropped my wand, and... Oh, did you uh, leave it there? <laughs> yeah, literally, I, I left in anger, and with a zero desire to be anywhere near that fucking thing. Okay, okay. So what is the plan? Cyril is still capable, even if you don't have all of your magic. Oh yeah, I'm not useless without it. Yeah. I guess I'm going... (laughs) I look down at Cyril, and there's just an unspoken, like, I don't want to do this. I want this over conversation between the two of us, and we turn around and head back in there. Okay. I think if you're rushing... You can get to a point where you can see what is happening. And although they look very different, you know, the dark and sparkling form, you were close enough with Silver Four. In your head, are they Silver Fork? Oh, yeah. Okay. You were certainly close enough with Silver Fork to recognize their silhouette. And you can see that vestige of you over there in the box. I think you can put two and two together and understand like at least partially what's happening here like that is your wyvern that is silver fork in some form obviously not brought back from the dead but it's them like that's not a different wyvern it is the exact same outline and shape it's just not that dull brass brown color Uh, anything you would like to say you don't have enough to like do stuff especially since you don't have your wand but you can certainly communicate with the party. Um, there's still plenty I can do without my wand. Oh, really? Yeah. The, okay. the only time you actually need a wand is if it requires a component. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what all the 
different parts are for all the different spells. Yeah. So I'm um, relying on you here to inform me. But if all I've got is left of my turn is the ability to speak. Mm, yeah, because I think mm. it's going to be more than 30 feet to go from the library to here. So I think it's going to have to be like you're, da- you're like you're effectively using the dash to get out of there. Mm. Although I also don't think you would have made it all the way to the library at this point. Yeah. I think you would have been on the way. The whole thing's a wash. Yeah, like it would have, it would evened out. Me just showing up is is more than kind. Um, oh yeah, uh, I think I look to Cyril, and there's the unspoken like, I need you to go get the wand. I'm an idiot. Conversation, and Mm -hmm. she's gonna begin to burrow like she's going under to go get it to save her. Ah, cool. I just say, Yoru's breath, there's not a break in this entire world, is there? Well, if I must die today, then I will at least die ending this abomination. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Cyril immediately begins the like, digging into the snow, digging into the ground, in an effort to go get that wand. Hmm. Oh, this is, this is certainly wild. Risto sees you come back, like, ah. Welcome back, Finnegan. You almost missed the excitement. He's a little worried about all this, but he's still trying to keep his cool, by which I mean his snarkiness. But there's definitely, like, worry in that. Back at the top of the round, Aranus, the teleportation box is certainly damaged and singed, and parts of it are smoldering. This vestige of Finnegan has summoned a wyvern, somehow. You don't know that it's Finnegan's wyvern, Silver Fork, but... You can recognize a wyvern. You've seen those before. That's not good. I think that's a dangerous creature. Well, and for what it's worth, I think the entire party, and especially Darwin and Arnis, are intelligent enough to know that I've talked about serving in the Air Force. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, two and two can pretty quickly add up. Right. I definitely think that's like, oh yeah, of course Finnegan, Vestige Finnegan would have a connection with wyverns, just not knowing that, like, this is meant to be oh, the, significance the same of it, yeah. wyvern. Yeah. Like, it could just be a wyvern, not necessarily that wyvern. But Arnis, what would you like to do? I want to cast Eldritch Blast. Okay, Eldritch Blast. Where are you targeting? Is this all on Vestige Finnegan? Is this all yes. on... It's okay. all on Vestige Finnegan. Okay, go for it. I roll the attack three times, right? Yes. Okay, that's a 23, a 24, ooh, and a crit. Bulls will all hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll your damage. Not as good as last time, but I'll take it. 17. Wait, 17 total? Yes. Even with the crit? Well, because each one is 1d10, and then I rolled 2 for that one. So that's 4d10s total. I didn't roll as high as last time. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I keep forgetting there's no, like, damage mo- like there's no modifier there's no like additional damage it's just the d10 right because it's, it's like a d10 plus yeah because right. it's cantrip okay yeah all three of those hit him like one two three dish, dish, dish. and the third one that crit blasts a hole open in their chest just whoosh. difficult to see through because of what they are made out of but definitely went through and like hit the wall behind they notice it and they turn, they look up at you. Anything else you'd like to do, Arnis? Yeah, I want to give Bardic Inspiration to Darvin. Okay. I'm just assuming he's going to have to make another con saving throw. It's possible. <laughs> he might He might finish this Finnegan off, but can you remind us what die size that is? Oh, it's, um, it's a d12 now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. All right, Darvin. You got an extra D12 to add to a roll if you want. Nice. I'll have one on standby. Because I did not. Okay. It is your turn now. Okay. This vestige of Finnegan is still right in front of you. Got some holes in him now, but still there. I'm going to keep on attacking. Okay. So first, leg sword for a 27. That'll hit. Okay. For 11 damage. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And second attack with the leg sword. Ooh, for a 12. Oh, a 12 is not going to hit. I'm going to, i like to spend a key point to flurry again. All right, let's do it. Because I got lots of key points, and I feel like the more punches, the better. Mm-hmm. First punch is a 
27. Okay, that'll hit. For 11. All right. Darvin, this punch is going to be sufficient. Where do you punch this vestige, Finnegan, to finish him off? In the face. In the face. Is this like an uppercut? Ooh, yeah, let's go with that. All right. I was just trying to picture it in my head. This is an uppercut. You knock this vestige Finnegan right in the chin. The head slams back. And then beginning with the chin starts fizzling out, just like burning away, dissipating, you know, back across the face, up the horns, down the torso, and just whoosh, vanishes. You still have your movement and one more punch left if you want it. <laughs> but if there's anything you want to do in between... Like if there's anything you want to say, or if you just want to jump onto this wyvern or attack this wyvern, you can go. Oh yeah, for it. there's still a wyvern. A okay, big yeah, wyvern. And I can get over to it and punch it. Yeah, yeah. You are very fast, Darvin. Cool. Let's do that then. I'd like to punch a wyvern. Are you just gonna punch it in the back, or are you going around to the face? Um, in the back. Okay. That's hindsight, but yeah. So I rolled a dirty twenty. That'll hit. Nice, and 12 damage. Okay, so you punch this wyvern on the hind side, wham, and it screams again, and it jerks its neck. Asturias slides along the ground a little bit, and just keep hold. Cool, cool, cool. After Darwin, it would be the vestige, but they're gone now. But this wyvern is definitely still here. I'm going to say, thanks to that rope, it's going to have disadvantage on its bite attack that it's going to attempt to use right now on Aranus. I'm going to reach down and try to bite you. Well, that's going to be a miss. Because that's a three on the die with disadvantage. Alrighty. So Aranus, you got lucky there. With its second attack, though, it's going to use its tail to make a stinger attack. And it's going to focus this on Asturias, that bear Tamani, who is holding them with a leash. That's not cool. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that's that's over 20 there with bonus added, so that's going to hurt. Asturias is going to take 10 piercing damage and then has to, oh gosh, make a constitution saving throw, otherwise take a lot of poison damage. Still going to take half of this, though. Oh, there's some low rolls. So Asturias gets, bam! Hit with that stinger. And just just like power through, just force through the full effect of this poison from the the stinger. But uh that hurt quite a bit. After the wyvern, it's gonna come to your party. Asturias is going to try to it's gonna try to further restrain this wyvern. It's gonna take this rope and try to tie it around something heavy, like something big. Like, maybe that just ends up being a door frame or a column or something in the surrounding environment. I was going to try to get that done real quick. Hey, hey, doing fairly good, fairly good, fairly good. Swings this rope around a, a column, ties it down. This wyvern's not going to be able to fly away without, like, basically yanking that off or eh, breaking the rope. But for the moment, grounded. Sam and Carolina are going to do their stuff again. Claws and bites. Oof, Sam's just not, not happening that time. Uh, this is a four and an eight, like just real low stuff. Uh, Carolina, though. Hey, hey, there we go. 14 and a 15 on the dice. So Carolina's attacks are going to get through just fine. She gets a couple of good slashes on the Swivern's legs. Slash, slash. Finnegan, you and Cyril. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? You don't have your wand yet. You could try to go run out there and get it if you wanted to. Mm-mm. -mm. This wyvern is in the way. <laughs> I've got a plan for that, so I have no problem with that. Okay. So I take my hands in front of me, and I begin to rub them together the same way you would, like, a stick if you were making a fire, mm. an old kind of way of doing it. Yeah. Um, and as I do it, I begin um, speaking some words in Draconic, and I'm essentially, I'm casting Scorching Ray. Mm, nice. And... From kind of that movement, the rays kind of, rather than like shoot straight out, they kind of snake out and then strike. And I'm going to cast it at my max level because this thing is a fucking abomination. What is your max level? 
Uh, my max level right now is four. Four. I have one so slot left. Two additional raids then. Yes. So okay. makes a total of five rays going straight Ooh. toward. And I'm gonna make that attack roll. That's five attack rolls. It's one for each ray. Oh yes. Okay. One, yeah, I'm looking at the spell, so I'm just like I wanted to know how different it was from Eldritch Blast, but apparently it shares that. Four, five. Okay. And my bonus is eleven, so that's gonna be a seventeen, a thirteen, a dirty twenty, a twenty-five, and another dirty twenty. Okay. Well, the thirteen misses. But the other four all hit. And they all do two D6s. So that's a total of eight D6s. Oh, you might as well cast Fireball at this thing. 15, 20, 24, 28, 35 damage. Whew. That is some rough stuff. It's like four of these rays just blasted in the wing and in the side. The fifth one just hits the ground right in front of them and they're hissing and roaring at you. Finnegan, mm-hmm. roll perception. Oh, that's actually a really good roll. That's 21. This wyvern, this vestige of a memory of Silver Fork, hisses and roars at you, but you've worked with Silver Fork and other wyverns and drakes long enough to know the difference between just like screaming out in pain and anger as a base natural instinct and one that's more like, how could you do this? Like, there's a sense of recognition. Like, it recognizes the Finnegan that you are in addition to the Finnegan that was that vestige Finnegan. Just in case we need to make things a little bit more traumatic for Finn. Um, okay, man, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. <laughs> but you're the one who went in, so you're the one who gets the brunt of the psychological. Mm hmm. Okay. After Finnegan. Cyril. What does Cyril do? Cyril's burrowing down to get your wand. Yes? Uh, she's essentially playing fetch. She's bringing it back mm-hmm. to me. Uh, what's her burrow speed? 20. Okay, okay, okay. I think she can get to it. She won't be able to bring it back to you until next turn. Got it. But you can see a little Cyril head pop out and like grab a wand in a mouth. Ah. Is she going to come back through the burrow tunnel or is she going to run? Back? Yeah, totally. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Cool. Little whack a mole cereal pops up. <laughs> and right. I think it's probably like really interesting to watch too, because she's we've done this before. So she's very well trained to kind of pop up and like very gently take it because she's so freaking strong she could probably break it without even trying. So mm-hmm. it's like the most gentle little nom you've ever seen. <laughs> Giant Drake, gentle nom. Um Okay. Arnis, we're back to you. Vestige Finnegan oh, has been taken care of. The teleportation box is still there. Wyvern is still there. Uh, the teleportation box look still look active? Like more stuff could come out of it? Yeah, yeah. You've done damage to it. You've done magic damage to it in the form of dispel magic. And you've done physical damage to it in the form of that firestorm. But that plane, that void, that the hollow, that doorway is still open a bit. Like parts of it are evaporating up into the sky, but you know, once it's getting out there, it's not harmful anymore. Or it's the potential for it to act as a doorway is not there anymore. But the, the door is still open. You haven't caved it in entirely. Then that's where I want to focus my energy. Okay. In which sense? Is this more damage or is this more dispel magic? No, I'm going to cast dispel magic, but I'm going to be cuckoo and I'm just going to like not using my divine whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pump it up to a level eight. Actually, no, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pump it up to a level eight, just like regular. And okay. then I want to spend three divine charges to pump it up to a level nine. Oh, really? Jeez. I, dude, this thing needs to be gone. Okay. <laughs> this is. The most magic that you've tried to do through your divine magic so far. The highest level anyways. Right. And, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to use my rebellious charge here. Yes. In an interesting, fun way. Actually, wait. I don't, I don't know if I can do it in this fun way. Let me read through my stuff again. Make sure I'm not trying to do a major as a minor. 
Uh, I was trying to. Okay. In which case, yeah, I'm going to use a minor effect because I think that's all I can afford right now. Just to give you a minus two on this roll as you make your spell casting check. So plus charisma, minus two. The DC is already way lower now, or the effect is way greater. But no, sorry. The DC is way lower now since you're casting at level nine. So your chance for success is very high. But as you're doing this, as you're channeling your divine energy into this to pump it up so high, you're getting a little feedback from the rebellious side of it all. And it's almost like it's hard to maintain focus. Sorry, I'm mathing. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a dirty 20. All right, dirty 20. Very solid hit. Very high level magic. And you're just focusing it right on the box. Just boom. Hit it with this dispel magic. Is there any visual aspect to this? Just curious, since you're making this divine, you can flavor this with some color or some sparks or some whatever. I mean, generally, if I'm trying to dispel magic, so my magic comes from music, right? So if I'm trying to like dissipate magical energies, then what I do is play badly and it disrupts <laughs> magic. <laughs> You're making M sing and play badly so you can disrupt it. this other weird magic. Love it. Yeah, it's like trying to, you know, just play a bunch of open strings and I'm like tuning one. So it's just... Gross. <laughs> Hot mess. <laughs> it's just like disgusting. <laughs> All the musicians out there right now are just like, ah, oh, oh, fire. No. <laughs> oh, it causes, no, it causes me pain to even say it. But I'm like, well, if magic comes from music, then how do I get rid of it? I'll play okay. like shit. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and this wave of bad magic hits the teleportation box, hits it hard. And all those smoldering pieces from the sides of it glow brighter. And the void, the dark and sparkling void on the teleportation box itself that is acting as this doorway starts just burning away, destabilizing away from the center out. And it's just the very, very fringe edge of it that remains. It's like a crack, like a little crack, not big enough for a person anymore. Anything else, Arnis? Nope. Okay. Darvin. I'm going to keep attacking the wyvern. Okay. Bring it. It's leashed. You're not going to get any advantage from that because it's still big and it can still like move its body around and you don't want to get hit by its bulk, but uh, it's on the ground. Okay. okay. So first with leg sword. Mm-hmm. And that's a 24. That's going to hit. For 12 damage. Okay. And the second, 14. That will hit. That will hit. Oh, good. Are you right on the right on the edge? Right, you hit it right on. It's the first time I've hit twice in a row. <laughs> um, that's thirteen damage. All right, and then one punch. Only one. Okay. Only one. Right, twenty-two. That's gonna hit. Or six damage. Okay. Let's out a very pained moan. <laughs> it's looking woozy. It's not in a good spot. After Darwin, hey, is the wyvern. So, this time Darwin is going to try to bite at you. How? And again, because it is, like, leashed and restrained in that way, this attack will have disadvantage. The low one on that. Does a 17 hit? Yeah, it does. Okay. It's only 12 piercing damage. Okay. And it bites onto you. And then Arnus, this time the stinger is coming for you. This tail whips around. Oh, goody. Mm-hmm. Does a 19 hit? Uh, not when I shield it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does that make your AC after you cast shield? 23. Oh, okay. It can't boost its to hit, but I was just curious. A 23. Great. The stinger's coming right at you, right towards your chest. And, just, ah, vroom, and like the very tip of the stinger pierces through the shield and it's just inches away from your chest. Just can't get through and it ah, yanks the tail back. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Asturias, having successfully leashed this wyvern and tied off that rope, is going to run to its backside and start climbing up its back. Just needs to make a real simple athletics check to not get tossed off as it's moving around. <laughs> Roll the three. That's fun. So they get like halfway 
up this wyvern's back and it bucks. Uh, Astoria's just like goes flying off the side down into the snow. Physically fine, but just they wanted to get up there and continue the capturing of this creature. Just not going to be able to happen this turn. Unfortunate. Sam is going to continue his attacks. Now one of those is going to hit. It cries out in pain again. Carolina. Claw, claw. Well, she gets the three and the five this time, so she is missing. I think this wyvern, this vestige of Silver Fork, is just thrashing about so much because it is so wounded. She just can't get in there properly. Finnegan, it is your turn. What do you want to do? You've seen wyverns in death throes before. This is mm-hmm. very close to that. All right. I still don't have my wand. Correct. I know it's close. So. Mm-hmm. I am going to throw a ray of sickness at it in the hopes that if I can't kill it, I can help whoever mm. tries next. Okay. Go ahead and cast it. So. I make kind of that hand where I take my right hand, touch my shoulder, and I throw like a a line of energy at it. And again, that kind of snake strike of energy hits it. But rather than being that kind of red of fire, it's kind of a sickly green Mm -hmm. snake kind of strikes it. Roll the red one because it rolled really poorly last time. Mm, Giving it a second shot. I like it. Yeah, that's much better. That's 24. Okay, that's going to hit. It's right on target. Hits it in the back of the shoulder. And it's going to take 2d8's poison, and it needs to make a con save. Okay. Okay. How much damage are we talking? 14. Alrighty. Uh, what's the DC for the save? I'm looking that up right now. I, they did not roll well. Uh, they got a 13. It's definitely higher than that. I just <laughs> can't remember it. Okay. But if it's higher than that, I believe you, because you're a high enough level wizard or sorry, your high enough level caster should be well over 13 by this point. Yeah, I mean, my, what's the standard for save starts with, isn't it eight plus? Yeah, eight plus proficiency plus modifier. Yours is the same as mine, it's 18. There you go, thank you. Because you're, yeah. Okay, with a spell save DC of 18, their 13 is certainly not enough. Was that 14 poison damage you said? Yep. With the 14 poison damage. And the fact that they are now also poisoned, this vestige of Silver Fork collapses down. There's this low moan. Like it's, if no one does anything, it's just going to die. It's poisoned, it's dying, and it's on its way out. It's no longer a threat, is what I will say. They are no longer a threat, and they are just dying. And you can finish them off. Whoever wants to can finish them off. If they want to, you can leave them, pass away on their own, do whatever you wish. Finnegan, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? I realize you can't actually take that action this turn to finish them off or otherwise, but what would you like to, is there anything else you'd like to do? No. Okay. At this point, Cyril can be back to you with your wand, pops back up out of the ground. How does Cyril react to this vestige wyvern? Like, scared? Like, turn? any other enemy, right? Like, it doesn't know any difference between this and anything else we've fought. Okay. Aranus. Yes? Aranus. This wyvern has collapsed down in a heap. It is breathing heavily. It is moaning. The teleportation box just has that outline of that void. That dark and sparkling void just along the edges. Nearly taken care of. Couple people are wounded. Nobody's in grave danger at the moment. What would you like to do? I feel like I haven't had the greatest luck. I mean, well, no, that's a lie. That, that that's last... a very much a lie. You've had a lot of luck. Lot, Those... Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I'm just I'm talking about like dispel magic. Like the one worked really well, but then like the other three times I've used it have been like, well, one was disastrous, and then the other two were just kind of like meh. So it's all progress trying to decide like should i do that again or should i just like eldritch blast it and see if that does it anybody got opinions don't look at me nope mm. and you can ask the npcs if you want and you just have to let me know which one you're asking but aside mm. from Ristos and felicity i don't think any of them yep. really know much about magic no nobody's really gonna have an opinion so 
all right. I guess I'll dispel magic thing again, but I'm not like I'm not gonna pump it up or do anything like that. I'll just see ends and Okay. Roll the dispel magic again. Oh. Hey, would you look at that? I crit. Hey! <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Mm. Mm. Well, this was going to go from let's make things more complicated to let's make things fun. With a crit, especially as close as this was to being finished off, you're going to succeed here. This dispel magic. Fire it out. Obviously, critting even before wasn't going to finish it off. Like You had to go through the steps. But this time, the crit, finishing it off. As you're casting it, anybody who's looking at this teleportation box and can see that line of the void around the perimeter of it, as Arnus is casting the spell, you don't see fingers reaching out. You see spider legs begin to reach out and crawl out. But as Arnus's dispel magic hits, it whoom, dispels this plane of magic, this doorway, and all of those spider legs, the little bits that were reaching out, just get severed. Whoosh, and they fall to the ground around it. Whatever spider vestiges were coming, not a threat anymore. Vestige Finnegan is gone. This vestige of a wyvern is dying. You have been successful with the box. You have been successful against the creatures that have come out of the hollow from the looming tomb. And it is relatively safe again. Arnis, anything you would like to do or say at your success? Yeah, I want to immediately kind of turn and see wherever Finnegan is and just and just say you were right I was stupid and I'm sorry and with that we'll bring this chapter to a close but the story will always continue thanks again to all of our Patreon patrons for your support if you'd like to become a patron go to patreon.com slash podcast and pick out a level that's right for you before we go, I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at the $5 and up tiers. At the $5 city council level, thank you, Shannon DeMello. At the $10 mayor level, thank you, Christopher DeMello. At the $15 governor level, thank you, Paul Calicott, Phoenix Bryan, and Sierra Jones. Thank you for listening to this chapter in Seasons of Skyrim. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find us. If you want to chat, we're on Twitter at Skyren Podcast. You can join our Discord server, or you can email us at skyrenpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us online at skyrenpodcast.com. As always, thanks to Daryl Barnes for creating our theme music. You can find them on Twitter at Daryl Barnes underscore. We also want to thank the talented at Gabby underscore Desu on Twitter for our fantastic podcast art. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on Seasons of Skyrend.